10 years ago, on the 25th of June 2009, shockwaves were sent right around the world with the sudden and, I guess, surprising announcement that Michael Jackson, the King of Pop, was dead. 50-year-old Jackson died at his Los Angeles mansion after overdosing on prescription drugs, leaving behind his three children, Paris, Michael Jr and Prince, in a, well, let's be honest, very controversial legacy. This morning, we're joined live by his then bodyguard, Bill Whitfield. Uh, Bill, hello to you. It's been a decade since Michael's sudden death. Everyone's got an opinion on him. How do you like to remember him? I certainly want to remember him as the... Uh... You know, as I often tell people that I didn't really know the king of pop. I knew Mr. Jackson, the man, the person, the father, and just doing ordinary things on a regular basis that we did outside of him performing. So I like to remember him seeing him in the light as just as, as, a, as, as, the, as a father that I was surprised to see him, you know, being as a single father at that. And, and there was just, just a side that a lot of people didn't get a chance to see. So seeing him on, a, on the uh, on norm of a more of a normalcy basis, is, is, is the person I want to remember. And there's certainly no hiding the controversy that surrounded Michael in the lead up to his death. How much do you think the stress of the abuse claims and those famous family feuds really did play a part? I certainly believe that the level of stress that he'd been going through, whether on a personal basis as well as business dealings, uh, certainly played a part. I, I, I really do. You know, uh, just, seeing on the, just seeing him tired from time to time and um, being privy to some of the conversations that he was having. Yeah, I do feel that uh, stress certainly played a, a major part. You worked for Michael from 2006 right through until his death. Did you ever see or hear anything while you were working for him that made you think that perhaps those abuse allegations were actually true? Absolutely not. Um, you know, certainly those are things in which I've heard about prior to going to work for him. And having been a, a, at the time, I was a single father myself, so in former law enforcement. So I certainly, you know, paid attention to just to see if any of those things like that were true. Because had I seen anything such as that, one, no, I would not continue to have worked for him, and two, I certainly would have uh, came forward with anything that I'd seen. But I've seen nothing remotely to him um, doing anything to the to the uh, allegation he he was facing. Yeah, I thought it was interesting to see you, you mentioned recently that uh, you thought Jackson, quote, talked about chicks all the time. What made you feel the need to defend his sexuality? Well, just the, uh, it, uh, when people would ask me, you know, I think that was really wasn't so much as defending his sexuality, but that was just part of my bringing the normalcy to, of the individual that I knew. And we talked about an array of things. Uh, we talked about whether it was cars and, and the stock market. And certainly women came up in those conversations, but that is something that, you know, you get a couple of guys together, we find ourselves talking about what we're interested in, in and uh, certainly women was one of the things that we, we talked about. So many people now will have seen that uh, controversial documentary, Leaving Neverland, and, and it certainly doesn't paint a, a pretty picture. We can be very straight up about that. Uh, I, I think most people now are at the point of thinking, where there's smoke, there's fire. Well, I, uh, I normally do not watch uh, Michael Jackson documentaries, uh, certainly if they're from one individuals that were prior to me or individuals that hadn't met him. But when I heard that this documentary uh, involved a point in time which Mr. Jackson was under my watch, and I, uh, I had to tune in. So when I did, I just immediately found out what, what you know, realized these, these guys were certainly lying or certainly not being truthful about certain dates, which they say they've seen but Mr. So Jackson. Did the people that they claim to be, Jackson, uh, the people that claim to have been abused by Michael Jackson, you're, you're saying they're liars? Oh, yes, absolutely, absolutely. These are people that have... I believe so. They have witnesses that back up their, their timeline of events. Uh, they have all sorts of evidence, but you, you uh, say it's all nonsense. I haven't seen any evidence. What, I don't know what evidence they had. I, I watched the documentaries like everybody else. I didn't see evidence. I saw cut-up pictures, and one of the pictures certainly looked Photoshopped to me. So it looked like they went through everything they needed to go through to make it as believable. But no, I knew Mr. Jackson personally very well. And no, I don't believe any of those allegations are true. Any. 
I'm interested to get your thoughts. You may well have seen that a number of radio stations here in Australia and you know, let's be honest around the world have actually banned Michael's music following on from those allegations that were aired in the documentary. Do you think that's a fair reaction or just over the top? Certainly well over the top. Um, you know, these, are, these are guys going back almost 10, 20 years, these guys are making these allegations and people for the, you know, making a decision to stop playing his music. But I, I'm more than certain. Majority of people, if not all, of these stations and outlets are stop playing his music, they'll be playing his music again. Do you think there'll ever come a time where people might perhaps move on from some of these allegations and just remember Michael the artist? Or is it pretty realistic now that his legacy will be forever tainted by these abuse claims against him? No, I don't believe so because I see as more and more that, that, that those stories are starting to die down, people are starting to do their research and starting to see that, wait a minute, there's a little bit, there's another side to these allegations or that these boys' story. And I think it's, it's, it's been falling apart slowly but surely, but it will come a time that everybody, well, majority of people, I believe, will see it as these was all a farce and uh, certainly a scheme to make some money. You, you published a book yourself uh, a few years ago detailing your time working with Michael. What made you want to get those details out there? Well, working with Mr. Jackson and seeing the, uh, the love, the, 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 the support of his fan base, and him having left this world without really giving that personal side. And like a lot, I think a lot of them knew who the King of Pop was. Uh, so I wanted to sh give a behind the scenes of what I witnessed of the man, of the person, of the father. And I feel his fans, oh, you know, uh, would do that. And um, certainly if Mr. Jackson was alive himself, I wouldn't have written a book. He could tell, you know, share that part with his fans himself. But because, unfortunately, the situation, I decided to give the fans this little side of who Mr. Jackson was and some of the things that he went through and so they can get a just better idea that there was someone outside of the King of Pop. Well, there's always two sides to every story, and as I said, there'll be plenty of people that uh, argue the other side to you, but we really appreciate your personal insights uh, on the show here this morning, Bill. Thank you. Thank you for having me.